What is up you savages, welcome back to the channel and day one of the WWE Draft 2019 is officially over so we're gonna round it up and talk all about it also talk about potential spoilers and some of the latest news heading into day two which is on Monday Night Raw we're also talking some of the backstage news a bit of WWE 2K20 and more before we get into it though make sure to elbow drop it and have those notifications turn on to not miss any of the upcoming coverage because there's a lot incoming in the next couple of days nonetheless let's get into it and let's round it up and i want to start off this roundup with my general thoughts in regards to the actual event let's keep in mind that this is supposed to be a draft i was actually at the event myself and when you are there live obviously you have more fun than what you actually end up seeing on television this time around though i found myself not even realizing the fact that it was a draft besides the two to three times that stephanie mcmahon came out there and announced the round picks from one two and three you wouldn't really realize how badly it was i remember the draft being hyped up for it being a raw versus smackdown type thing this year it certainly felt like they just threw that out of the window and they just continued to tell us that yes it is gonna be a rivalry see which brand is gonna be the best but in the end it doesn't even matter i don't want to see a couple of executives backstage getting excited that they drafted randy orton to monday night raw and then fox in another room getting excited excited for Roman Reigns to come to SmackDown Live. It was lacking the back and forth and the silly shots at one another from one brand to the next to actually make it competitive. And I think that's my biggest issue. Even watching this draft back, I found myself realizing that all of this was just a regular SmackDown Live episode with two segments of Stephanie McMahon coming out there and talking on the stage about who going where. They got Eric Bischoff and Paul Heyman. It makes no sense as to why they did and just do it like that have eric bishop represent smackdown live fox and paul Heyman represent monday night bro we already know that they're the quote-unquote executive directors and even if they are not gonna be having a role on television this should have been the perfect time to at least do it that one time i really hope that they change the format of it comes monday night bro but i think at this point it's too late because now if they change it then smackdown live is gonna look like the lesser show which of course they don't want in my personal opinion, even though I attended the arena live to watch this, it was a very bare bone draft, making it probably one of the worst that we've seen. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I just think that the format of it honestly sucked. And it looks like we were not the only one who was complaining or at least unhappy after SmackDown Live. Because following this first day of the draft, Kevin Owens wasn't really too excited. So on SmackDown, of course, he ended up getting drafted to Monday Night Raw when honestly he just started to make a big impact by being on SmackDown. Despite the move, the former Universal Champion is seemingly quite unhappy at how the draft went down. Speaking on Twitter, Kevin Owens was clearly far from pleased at being drafted in the third round of last night's draft. He tweeted out the following, Last night, the WWE digital team asked me for my thoughts after I was drafted to Raw. I gave them a very honest, heartfelt answer. They decided not to post the footage because I appear to be angry. I was angry. I still am. Round three? Looks like I still have lots to improve. So Kevin has claimed that he was so angry during his interview following the announcement of his move to Raw that WWE just decided to not even post the footage extra interview that they did for him. And this could go one or two ways because it is Kevin Owens after all. He is either playing it off or he's just really playing it off to create a buzz. Knowing Kevin Owens, he could go off and basically just be extremely angry at the WWE machine up to why he was drafted on round three ahead of certain superstars that haven't even been on television over the last month or so like Bobby Lashley or Drew McIntyre or even some of the announced team. Talking about the draft, let's go ahead and recap the first three rounds that happened on night one. So the first pick was actually the Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch going to Monday Night Raw. Roman Reigns to SmackDown as the first pick for that brand, the OC, AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, and Lou Gallows drafted to Raw, Bray Wyatt to SmackDown, and Drew McIntyre to Monday Night Raw. On the 
second round, we got Randy Orton to Raw, Ricochet and Bobby Lashley also to Raw, and SmackDown ended up drafting Sasha Banks and Braun Strowman. For the third round, we got Alexa Bliss, Kevin Owens and Natalia going to Raw, and Lacey Evans and the SmackDown Tag Team Champions The Revival to SmackDown Live. Then we got the last round, because I kind of forgot about the fourth one, but in that one, we got the Viking Raiders, Nikki Cross and the Street Profit going to Raw, while Lucha House Party and Heavy Machinery were chosen to SmackDown Live. It's worth mentioning that Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss are both still on Monday Night Raw, but for some apparent reason, they ended up drafting them together. So based on this first day, there's actually 11 superstars that were eligible to get drafted but weren't, and those superstars that are now free agent are Cesaro, Humberto Carrillo, Akira Tozawa, Sin Cara, Eric Young, EC3, Chad Gable, Heath Slater, Drew McIntyre, the B team, and Tamina. They will more than likely end up getting drafted over on social media after the full televised draft is over. Worth mentioning that social media was losing their mind because Cesaro simply tweeted free agent last night after SmackDown Live. So let's not lose our mind, but I do hope Cesaro is a free agent and end up going to NXT because that is exactly what WWE needs to do. By the way, announcing the pool of who exactly is eligible to get drafted and not drafted on the first day of the draft was a massive botch by the WWE. Everyone pointed out the fact that when you go to the website, they were drafting people by the order that they listed them, ultimately spoiling everything. And on top of that, it doesn't lead to the shockers that it should. I'd glad to not know whether The Fiend is gonna get drafted on the first night or the second night, just to keep it unpredictable. Talking about The Fiend with him actually getting drafted to SmackDown Live, it's clear that his feud with WWE Universal Champion Seth Rollins is over, which might explain why we got the screwy finish that was a hell in a cell. A bit of spoilers here, but Seth Rollins is expected to stay on Monday Night Raw with his fiance Becky Lynch. This means that this main feud is certainly over, and the Fox executive got exactly what they wanted. There were rumors that Bray was really wanted in the blue brand, and that WWE didn't necessarily know what decision to make because they wanted him for Raw, and especially Paul Heyman was advocating heavily to keep him on the red brand. Another big highlight coming out of SmackDown Live was certainly Bailey turning heel and winning the SmackDown Women's Championship once again. She fought Charlotte Flair on the main event. The match saw Bailey not only debut a new look with short hair and darker hair, but also consolidated her heel turn by attacking her inflatable Bailey bodies. And this was definitely a good decision by the WWE because let's get real, Bailey hasn't been doing much as a babyface, but at the same time, on the verge of turning heel because she's aligning herself with her best friend, Sasha Banks, who is also one of the biggest heel in the women's division. This heel turn is certainly being talked about it online, which is exactly the attention that Bailey needs. There's even videos of some little kids actually crying about Bailey turning heel and doing that to the Bailey buddies, which is understandable because a kid, of course, seeing Bailey come out there is not gonna see her as a bad person, but us watching pro wrestling for so long, we know that at the end of the day, this was needed and hopefully WWE does better by Bailey and actually make it as serious as possible. I already love the fact that they changed the theme song and of course the entrance is completely changed, so it is a step in the right direction. We even got Bailey and Sasha Banks actually replying to all of these in heel fashion, which is great and it's just getting social media to talk about it even more. Sticking with Sasha Banks, WWE Games ended up rating her an 80 overall and boy she wasn't having it because the first tweet that she sent out was this, an 80? That's why I said no to your stupid commercial at WWE Games. She is of course referring to the commercial for the game featuring a bunch of legends but also all of the other four horsewomen, Bailey, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, which is kind of weird for her to call them out considering the fact that this was when she was at home taking a sabbatical from the WWE after quote unquote some controversies. To some other quick news and sticking with SmackDown Live, this week's rating are in and WWE saw a massive decline in viewership at SmackDown brought in 2.9 million viewers for the first hour and 2.8 million for the second. 
That is down dramatically from last week's high rating 3.9. Last week was of course the debut episode of SmackDown on Fox, so it was bound to be on those high numbers. This week though, it was the draft, WWE heavily advertised it, so that in itself is a bit of a problem because it's getting them closer to the ratings that they were before, which of course is something that they don't want. And the last piece of news that I got for you guys, it's in regards to a potential big baby face turn that could be coming to the Monday Night Raw brand. As we had Randy Orton after SmackDown Live went on the air in a dark match segment where him and Kevin Owens didn't really wrestle and instead they took out some heel 205 Live superstars to send the crowd home happy. Very unusual considering that Randy Orton has been one of the top heels on SmackDown Live over the last couple of months and all of a sudden in a dark match next to Kevin Owens one of the biggest babyface on SmackDown over the last couple of months he ended up being used in this position maybe with him getting drafted to monday night raw they're gonna turn him once again this year so anyways guys that's what i got for you in this roundup if you enjoy don't forget to elbow drop it and hit those notifications to be fully up to date on all the latest we're in the road to 200 000 subscribers i'm going to see you dig it